Hi there, Kindles and Kobos are direct competitors in the e-reader market. Right in front of me, I have the Kindle Paperwhite and the Kobo Clara HD. These two are direct competitors to each other. And something that's not talked about enough is the speed differences in terms of responsiveness between these two devices in the Kindle ecosystem and the Kobo ecosystem. In today's video, I'll be doing a direct comparison between these devices, focusing just on speed. And the way I'm gonna do this is the Kobo Clara HD will represent the Kobo lineup. This is because the Clara, the Libra, and the Forma all share the same hardware specs. So this is a great representation for the whole Kobo lineup. Now on the Kindle side, things are a bit more complicated. Unfortunately, every single Kindle is a little bit different when it comes to hardware specs. The basic Paperwhite and Oasis are all slightly different. The Paperwhite though is probably the most common one. So I'll be doing my testing with that. But I also have my Kindle Oasis over here, which is a little bit faster with the dual core processor. I'll also do the same tests comparing both the Kindle Paperwhite, the Oasis, against the Kobo Clara HD. Now the first test I want to show you is turning on the Kindle Paperwhite against the Kobo Clara HD. There is a night and day difference when it comes to turning on these devices. Again, this is not waking up from sleep mode. I am actually turning these devices on or restarting them from a fresh power on. And there's a huge difference in how long it takes for the Kobo to turn on versus the Paperwhite. The Kobo turns on within seconds and the Kindle Paperwhite literally takes minutes. It is a very big difference. Now the chances of you actually powering off and restarting your Kindle or your Kobo is very low. We actually only use sleep mode during day-to-day -day use. The only time you'll actually restart it is if your Kindle or Kobo is frozen, which really does not happen very often at all. But when I did compare the Kindle Oasis against the Kobo Clara, I was really surprised. I honestly thought the Kindle Oasis would catch up and turn on just as fast as the Kobo Clara, but even with the dual core processor on the Kindle Oasis, it still took very, very long. Not as long as the Kindle Paperwhite, but it still surprised me how quickly the Kobo Clara beat out the Kindle Oasis when it came to the power on test. Next up, we have the opening of book speed test. Now this is very interesting because I did this twice. The first time I tested this was when both devices turned on for the first time after that restart. And when you open up a book for the first time after restarting your Kindle or your Kobo, the Kobo wins by a landslide. It just opens up so quick and the Kindle actually takes several seconds to open up the book. This is probably because when it's first turning on, it has to kind of load the book for the first time. It just takes a while. However, after you open the book once, and you go back to the main home screen on both devices, reopen them again the second time, they both open up around the same speed. I did see the Kindle speed up every single time I opened the book. And that's probably because the Kindle is starting to cache all that data in the local memory, so it just opens up much quicker. But it's still really interesting to see. I'm guessing after a long period of sleep, the Kindle takes a bit longer to catch up and wake up properly, where the Kobo is just jumping out of bed, ready to go without a moment's notice. At the same time, the Kindle Oasis against the Kobo Clara was very, very similar. It took a few extra seconds for the Kindle Oasis to turn on that book after it powered on for the first time. However, after using the book a few times, it opened up at the same exact speed as the Kobo Clara. Now here are my thoughts on this. When it comes to waking up your Kindle, I have noticed in everyday use, if I don't use my Kindle for several hours or a couple of days, it does take a few extra seconds to open up a book. And I do find that little lag to be a bit annoying. On the Kobo, that problem really isn't there. But at the end of the day, it's not a big deal at all, especially if you're using your Kindle for the first time after a few days, you're not going to mind waiting an extra second or two for it to wake up and warm up a little bit. It's not the biggest deal in the world. Where it would get annoying though, is if that was happening every single time the book opens, and that is not the case. After you open a book once or twice, the speed of it is much, much quicker to open up. So in everyday use, both these devices are really, really good. The next test we have over here is the page turn test. This is something we obviously do a lot on our e-readers turning the page in a book. On the Kindle Paperwhite against the Kobo Clara, I found them to be pretty much exactly the same. They felt very similar, but side by side, I couldn't really tell any difference at all. Where I did see a difference though, 
was against the Kindle Oasis and the Kobo Clara. The Kindle Oasis, for some reason, maybe I can't show it on camera, but in person at least, it does feel a bit more fluid. What I mean by that is I think it's just more snappy. The Kindle Oasis just works a little bit better when it comes to page turns. It just seems a bit more seamless. And again, this really is not a big deal. In everyday use, you're not gonna see a difference at all. It's only when you put the Oasis and the Kobo side by side where you see that difference. The last speed test I wanna do is when it comes to highlighting and note taking. This is very important to me, especially on my Kindle. I export all my highlights through Readwise. That's not available in the Kobo. So on the Kindle especially, I'm very familiar with highlighting. And I was really interested to see how the Kobo compares to highlighting and note taking speeds. What I found was the Paperwhite and the Clara HD, as well as the Oasis, are all about the same. There is really no noticeable speed difference when it comes to highlighting text. Same thing for entering in notes. Typing on both these devices is very similar. The typing speed is not that bad at all. It's nothing near as good as an iPhone, for example, but the touchscreen on both these devices are very, very good. One thing I will say though is on the Kindle, I do prefer the button layout much better because the save button is a lot bigger as well as the button to add a note. On the Kobo, the software, the size is just a bit too small. You have to spend an extra second just being able to press that button in the right place. Putting that aside though, the actual speed is exactly the same. So there you have it. You have all the speed tests for the everyday things you'll probably be doing on your Kindle or your Kobo. At the end of the day, the Kobo is faster when it comes to powering on and doing a few other things, but the Kindle Oasis is not that far behind. The Kindle Paperwhite is probably the slowest of the three on this table right now. But at the end of the day, like I said earlier in the video, they all do the same thing. They all work very well on the day-to-day -day basis. You aren't gonna see any difference using a Kindle, Paperwhite or Kobo Clara or the Kindle Oasis. Reading is what matters. Just find a book that you like and read through it. If you enjoyed this video, check out my video comparing Kindle versus Kobo when it comes to the software and all the other features. That will actually go in very depth with why I use Kindle over Kobo and why I actually like something in the Kobo that I wish the Kindle had. Link for that on the screen right now. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.